my subscribers, it's Geekonomics here once again and today we are looking at extract 4 so the penultimate extract on the F585 pre-release material first thing to say about this is that extracts 4 and 5 are very much linked together and from my point of view it's really nice to see this, this is something which hasn't really ever appeared I don't think on any of the pre-release material before something to do with a planned economy and the opening up of a planned economy as it moves from planned to a more open market economy now there have in the past been other pre-releases which have looked at maybe countries such as Estonia and Latvia and so on but the way in which this particular extract talks about the opening up of Cuba making specific reference to a planned economy, making specific reference to features of a planned economy, such as what we shall see in the opening couple of paragraphs. This is all really nice to see from a teaching point of view because whilst it does appear in the specification and in a small way in your textbook, uh, it's really nice to see this and this is clearly what the focus of the comment question is going to be on extract 4 and then that leads in and links nicely with extract 5 which of course is going to be the big discussion 20 mark question. So first thing to say about this is with regard to the specification I think we're probably looking somewhere in this area here on development and sustainability. Economic development but the interesting thing on this one is, of course, policies to promote economic development, the role of the market and the state and international trade. And these three things are all issues within this particular extract for the state, the market and the role of international trade. So I really believe that this is where this particular question really is uh, stemming from and this is where we need to be looking when we consider what the likely question will be. So let's just have a little look ladies and gentlemen and maybe do a little bit of um, annotations on this. We can. Okay so I'll just read through this and we'll just pick out the key points and then at the end of this video I'll tell you what I think the likely question will be. So for decades Cuba's operated there we go, a planned economy, dominated by state-run enterprises, most industries being owned and operated by the government, and most of the labour force employed by the state. Now those of you who know the key features of a market economy, you'll know that they are things such as private property, freedom of choice, freedom of enterprise, self-interest, competition, price, that sort of rationing aspect of a price, and the price mechanism, the way in which resources are allocated by the consumer, the consumer being sovereign and all-powerful in that respect over a resource allocation, whereas of course in the state-run plan system that is not the case. You're not allowed to own and run, run your own business. You don't earn profit for yourself. You don't really have a choice as to what jo which job you do. So these are all issues which are of real importance in this particular article. However, changes are afoot. The exact path remains uncertain, but Cuba's economy is on the move. Bright-eyed capitalists. So capitalism, ladies and gentlemen. When we're talking about the planned economy here, I think it mentions here somewhere about the, the communist uh, state. So here we are talking about move, opening up and moving more towards the free market system and capitalism. Where of course one can start one's own business. One can acquire land, labour, capital ent and enterprise. Bring them all together. Start your own business. Earn your own profit. None of which you could do in the old planned state system. Capitalists have been thumping the table since Obama gave the nod to restoring diplomatic relations an important step to opening up trade links. So remember, ladies and gentlemen, when I said about that first, um, that first little section in the specification where it talks about the market, the state, and international trade. So here we have it, the trade links, which have been severed since the communist revolution, etc. This follows a change in economic focus, a change in focus. It started in the early years of the new decade, 
and the Communist Party outlined its own tropical perestroika. Now, the sort of translation, technical uh, explanation of perestroika simply means restructuring. So the whole notion of restructuring, and that started with Mikhail Gorbachev, of course, in the 1980s. Uh, something you, you could maybe have a little look at, Gorbachev. A forward-looking blend of goals, strategies and values intended to adapt the island's socialist project to the contemporary global order. So, in other words, moving away from this whole notion of socialism, uh, communism, closed economy, and opening up to the free market. So, remember, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking here, therefore, about very much about an economy which is very much in transition in that respect. This somewhat remarkable sea change is made evident in the sleepy seaside town of Mariel, where a hulking monument to the communist island's evolving economy, so it's evolving economy, so it's opening up, is rapidly taking shape. A free trade zone and container port. Now, why would you want a container port, ladies and gentlemen? Because you're going to bring goods in, you're going to ship goods out, you're going to engage in trade. In the latter stages of construction, the deep water facility will have a capacity of up to a million containers, three times that of Havana's existing port, and 700 metres, so that it can accommodate the world's largest cargo ships. The world's largest cargo ships. So, bringing goods in from elsewhere in the world. Partially financed by loans from Brazil and built by a Brazilian construction firm, Odebrecht. The port will be op operated by Singapore's PSA. The free trade zone, meanwhile, aims to attract international companies. Okay, so remember, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking there MNCs, multinational corporations. So we're thinking about. Foreign Direct Investment, FDI, into an economy, bringing with that foreign direct investment, what does it bring? It brings capital, it brings resources, it brings technology, it brings skill, it brings jobs to the area, it brings, hopefully, wider technological spillover effects to the area. Now, all of these things, of course, we could uh, illustrate by way of AD and some AS analysis, which we will come back to at a later point. By offering them a low tax, now this is, this is remarkable, isn't it, for a, a sort of formerly closed, shut down economy, to be offering a low tax, low state intervention, low regulation environment in which to manufacture goods. So this really is saying, to the global economy, we are open for business and we are providing you with the perfect climate in which to do business. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave it at that uh, because I've got to move off and be elsewhere. So I'll come back later with some other thoughts on the remaining paragraphs. Bye for now.